Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. I think that this world, it needs men that are willing to make the hard call. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Ain't no thing like me, Seth Lee. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. Matt's coming. No. When do we start? Hey, welcome back. Regular show this week. Thank God you're still listening after last week's train wreck. Are you? I didn't look at the numbers. Um, I chose not to. As someone uh, best put it, it wasn't our worst show. I was also told, if that was my first show, I wouldn't listen to another. Thanks, Zach's mom. <laughs> no. Um, my harshest critic. I, You know, <clears throat> we stepped out of our comfort zone, and we tried to uh, do something different. Much like America is right now. Oh, God, I'm not getting into any of that. Hey, if you're listening to this on a Wednesday, thanks for subscribing to our Patreon. Yeah, you're awesome. If you're listening to this on a Thursday, subscribe to our Patreon. You could still be awesome. $1 is a thank you. $5, you get the podcast a day early, plus some videos, and um, possibly another show on this small but budding network, sooner rather than later, before the rest of the world, and things, other things. Has anyone done the uh, the big Kahuna package there, where they get the uh, the voicemail? We got one of those, yeah. Oh, really? Have you already done the voicemail? Basically. Oh, I wasn't included on it. You can be if you want. You can do it now. Oh, okay. Uh, so Patreon subscriber uh, who paid for the big Kahuna package, thank you for your support. We really appreciate you uh, uh, lending money to the cause, and uh, glad you're part of the Edhead family. <laughs> Stay classy and keep being you. You know who you are. We don't have catchphrases. We should, though, and that's a problem. <laughs> we had catchphrases. We could just practice this well and be like, those are some tasty nachos. I don't know about that. There's a that was a terrible one. I hate that one. There's a snake in my boots. No? You, can, you can't use copyrighted material. Oh, sorry. No catchphrase. <laughs> we'll, work, we'll work that out. As we do most weeks, sometimes in a weird order. But let's start it off like we do on a normal show and get into the news. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. News. I have a legitimate question. Is there such a thing as a normal show with us? There's a structure. There's a format. I well, have most, most entertaining um, podcasts, radio shows, etc. do have some sort of a format. So I'm, I'm glad <clears throat> we have a format. I, mean, our... I like to think that every show there's a little... A little something, a little spice, a little pizzazz. I mean, our format is, is adds it, to it. You walk into the house silently. I don't acknowledge you. We don't speak for an entire week until we turn on the microphone, so everything's fresh. But I am dressed unlike a hobo today. I must say, I look stunning. No one cares. They Nobody can't can see, see you. Me. Yeah, well, I'm wearing a shirt and a tie and some nice dress slacks. That's right, dress slacks. That was the funeral. Uh, well, we only lost by 28 tonight. So. <laughs> wow. Uh- <laughs> I just spin it. Good. Good on you. <laughs> Follow up on a story from last week. Ben Affleck says, shut up. Why am I not surprised? Why wouldn't he say something like that? Um, Although it would be better off if he just didn't acknowledge it and kept his head down and kept doing well, that's kind of the, things. I'm paraphrasing. Basically, he said, yeah, no, I'm doing, I'm doing Batman, but there's a lot of pressure on it. Like all these other movies I've been doing, no one's been yelling at me, but... When it comes to Batman, people are freaking out, and he says it's pressure, and they're working on it, and he's, yeah, definitely doing it. Where's the trigger? But it's one of those... Where's the key grip? A ton of people picked up on it. There are all these articles this week, like, who should replace Ben Affleck like, if he, like, bails, and blah, 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 and it was dumb. He has a good movie. Uh, looks like it's a good movie coming out. Yeah. Uh, what was it called? It's about, it's like a, a gangster kind of movie about mm. bootlegging. Looks really good. But he basically was like, yeah, no, I'm I'm doing it. Don't... Don't worry. Ben Affleck can make quality films. He's shown it before. Goodwill Hunting, Argo. Was he? Yeah, he was Argo, wasn't he? He, he was Argo. Uh, I guess he won an Oscar. Yes. Who else? What else did he do? That the was town. Weird? Gone, baby, gone. Yeah. So I mean, he's capable of producing highly top quality films. Reindeer Games, Daredevil. Wait a minute. He did Reindeer Games. Well, he acted in it. Oh. I meant like directed. Oh no, I didn't directed. I've just scraped the bottom of the barrel. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Remember Reindeer Games? Uh, I do. A Tom Clancy. Uh, Is it really it's based on Tom? I, I believe didn't know so. That. Let me fact check the show. We didn't fact check the show last week. That's why 
the show wasn't very good. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Reindeer Games is a Tom Clancy um, novel because he's playing um, Jack Ryan, I believe. Uh, I'm going to believe you. I'm just going to move on. Uh, uh, <clears throat> maybe not. Maybe not. No, no. I shouldn't have believed you. I shouldn't have listened to your fake news. Danny Trejo's in it, so. <laughs> um, I like Danny Trejo. He's a character. No, he was, oh, he was in Some of All Fears, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that was and that was That was based on... That a... was No, that's Steven. No, wait, I'm mixing up movies. I'm thinking of Dreamcatcher. They came out like the exact same time. Yeah, Some of All Fears is... Um... This is a weird digression into early 2000s movies. Yeah, Some of All Fears is based on the Tam- Tom Clancy novel. More news, Blade Runner 2049 is going to feature a replicant from the first movie. You know, I... But they don't they didn't say which one. It's like a movie I remember watching not long ago. Oh, that no. was last week's show. It's done. No, nope. oh, fair enough. No more clip shows. Good idea. Unless someone wants to edit together a clip show, then you can use that sound bite. Uh, well, no thank you. Hang on, let's give them a little bit of space in three, two, one. No more clip shows! Thank you. Uh, but yeah, it's supposed to feature another replicant from the first movie. They didn't say which one, so we put some of that de-aging technology. Oh, you mean like, you know, face masking and stuff, which they pioneered on Star Wars Episode Three? No. Oh. Um, but I don't know, I'd like to see... <laughs> it could be any of them. I just want to see one guy, everyone getting confused about what a tortoise is. Isn't that the guy who beat the hare in the race? You remember that though? <laughs> like a tortoise is on. What's a tortoise? Oh like, yeah. Turn. Or you have like Rutger Hauer doing it, like giving a big soliloquy and his being like, "What's a tortoise?" I like it. But we'll see. I don't know. They didn't say who it's going to be, but you know, obviously they have to connect it to the last one. But I'll be curious to see. I say that he's still a replicant. I'll stand by that. Who Harrison Ford? Yeah, yeah. that'd be a nice little <clears throat> tidy plot twist. I say it's a double blind. I've always thought that. That it wasn't just about Harrison, or we'll just call him Deckard. That it wasn't just about him trying to find out if he could detect that Rachel was a replicant when Rachel was, and she didn't know it. It was also going to be if he could see it in himself. And he doesn't until now. Or maybe he did. I think he's just a, a different model that ages. But who knows. Speaking about Harrison Ford, in a roundabout way, mm-hmm. uh, Woody Harrelson is supposedly up for a role as Han Solo's mentor in the Han Solo Solo prequel movie. Really? So who would his mentor be, though? Because Han Solo's always been badass for being, like, that loner guy. Yeah, but we also meet him when he's, like, roughly 30. The idea that him a, a few years prior not being fully independent isn't that big of a stretch. Maybe, like, his father, maybe... No, I don't think it's going to be his father. But the weird thing for me is... I like Woody Harrelson, so it's nothing against him. But the problem is, is I like Woody Harrelson, and he's a name. When you watch the Star Wars movies, you're usually seeing an unknown. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what George Lucas founded the franchise on, hiring people young, unknown actors. Granted, he did hire Harrison Ford, who was an American graffiti and was known for being, you know, in that movie and was, you know, somewhat known at the time. Yeah, but that's the only thing that seems a little weird. I like him a lot, but... I don't know. I just I don't know if I want to see like a super recognizable face in there. He'll always be Hamish. Compa- Actually, he's always going to be more than just that to me. But <laughs> like, the, like my father, hmm. much like he was to Han Solo. Aww. Staying in the realm of Star Wars, check this out. Rebels just dropped um, a trailer. You guys see the end of it. You're in the wrong place. Ooh. Old Obi-Wan fighting Darth Maul on Tatooine. I like it. What? I also like that they, like, it was a, Alec, it's not like an Alec Guinness voice poll. Oh, man, it looks good. And I don't watch the show, but I always, like, I watch, I don't know why I do, but I end up watching the trailers for it, and I was like, God, that looks cool. But I never end up watching it. I like me a little Obi-Wan. But yeah, so old Obi-Wan is going to fight Darth Maul, who I, I know he came back in the Clone Wars. I don't know how he did it. But he, as you may remember, and we may speak on it, he did deca- um, de- de- decapitate him, cut him in half. Oh yeah, he sliced him in twain. Nice solid line right down the middle. Yeah, he the, he made that face you make when you like fart and you're not sure if it's solid or not. Marvel announced this week that starting in February, when you buy a physical comic in a store, you'll get a minimum of two free digital download codes for older Marvel comics. 
that you can cool. use on their app. So you're at a minimum getting three books, and they they said that it's gonna be at least two books per comic. Wow, so three books for the price of one, and you can get some. Is it gonna be the whole catalog, or is it no? Be it's, I th- it's not. You're gonna get selection. you don't get to like pick and choose. It's gonna probably be something that's connected with that book. Maybe it's an older character thing, or maybe it's a story that ties into it somehow. But yeah, to try and get people to go buy more physical books, they're gonna be giving two digital download codes. Which is probably um, to compete with DC lowering the price of their books. DC's like two ninety nine per comic, and Marvel's like three ninety nine for three or more. Yeah, what up? Yeah, and it's back stock that they've already invested and in, probably made money on in some way, shape, or form. So yeah, I mean Marvel has nothing to lose here. They, that's just it's digital download codes. Like there's no loss. There's no loss. There's no overhead. It's already been paid for. Yeah, they only have, there's only gain for them, and there's only gain for consumers and there's only gain for retailers i love this plan it's i think it's smart it's heady business and it might be a way to you know they're probably in the way that they release the comics and digital download i would imagine that it's going to be kind of a morsel to make you want to go and get some more yeah but that's really exciting so starting in february any marvel comic you buy a minimum of two digital download codes to get you additional comics so you could get more than that you could get like three or maybe four they didn't really specify. They just said minimum of two, and some I'm not sure how it's going to work. Well, minimum means at least. It doesn't mean a cap of. Yeah. Good on you, Marvel. Smart business. I like it. And a thing that never happened at Marvel, James Gunn, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Electric Boogaloo, had said he originally talked to Marvel about potentially doing a Moon Knight movie. A Moon Knight? For those who don't know what Moon Knight is, he's a schizophrenic who may or may not have an Egyptian god in his head. Uh, that would be very complicated. And also, he's basically Batman. That's extremely complicated. <laughs> By the way, when I was at the store today and I saw the Harley Quinn Batman uh, boxing match, can we just point out how cool that splash page was where Batman was drunk along with everybody else? <laughs> that was a kind of cool party. <laughs> Why not enjoy yourselves? I would highly recommend. If Take you a day like, off. If you like cool splash pages and you like Harley Quinn and you like Superman, pick it up. Check it out. There's a there's yeah. one copy of Editor's Note. Yeah, that was... um. Neil Adams did kind of a parody of his Muhammad Ali versus Superman book, including the cover and some of the stuff inside. I mean, Neil Adams, legendary artist. You know, it's a big deal when Barack and Michelle Obama are in the front row for the see Superman and uh, Harley Quinn box it out. Someone made a little mistake in casting news this week. Uh-oh. An actress whose name I didn't write down and don't remember. Uh-oh. But that's not the point. It's one of the actresses who's going to be in the upcoming New Mutants movie for Fox. And one of the reporters was like, she's currently in a movie that's out that has James McAvoy in it. And like, is there a chance of you reuniting with your co-star in the upcoming New Mutants movie? And she's like, yeah, isn't, isn't he in that? Uh-oh. <laughs> so yeah, he's going to be in New, apparently in New Mutants and we're not supposed to know yet. Well, now we know. Yeah. Good job, actress whose name I don't know. She's going to play Ileana, little blonde girl, teen, oh. teenager, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. I didn't show you this, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, Marvel put out a video this week, which was just funny. They were breaking down Spider-Man's costume. They're like, mm. No, I saw it. It was, it was like for, um, it's not E3. What's the big tech convention coming up? I saw it. Like they showed like Stark Industries presents and it. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they're like <clears throat> built by Tony Stark, like web wings for gliding. Yeah. Then, but G- my, built in GPS and yeah. Yeah, but then my favorite part is they just get to the like the eyes on the mask and they just go show emotion. No, that's yeah, they just say expressive eyes. <laughs> that's not a thing. That's not a function. Who would build a mask just for expressive eyes? Tony would. Well, I mean in a functional world. In movie world it's great that you can have more expression in the eyes, but that's all they said, like expressive eyes. No, I, I actually I did see that. Oh good for you. So it's just an aesthetic choice, apparently. Oh uh, yes. It has nothing to do with anything. It doesn't focus anything. Oh, well. CW, in the world of television, can't believe I talk about the CW in my life, uh, they've renewed all four of the DC comic shows. So, more Flash, more Supergirl, more... Green Arrow, Green more Arrow Legends and... of Tomorrow. Yeah. More crossover episodes. God, I hope so. Do you think the crossover episodes are the only thing that, like keeping it afloat that make it... Um, so you have to kind of like stay tuned and watch everything? No, I, they all pull decent ratings. Last bit of news, Marvel has released the Thor Ragnarok plot synopsis. Tell me more. Tell me more. Are you ready? Yes. Like, does he have a car? 
Yes, tell me more, tell me more. Did you get very far? Uh, we'll get far into the synopsis. Keep going. In Marvel Studios, Thor Ragnarok, Thor is imprisoned on the other side of the universe without his mighty hammer and finds himself in a race against time to get back to Asgard to stop Ragnarok, the destruction of his home world and the end of Asgardian civilization. At the hands of an all-new powerful threat, the ruthless Hela. But first, he must survive deadly gladiatorial combat that pits him against his formal, former ally and fellow Avenger, the Incredible Hulk. So they pretty much just gave away the whole frigging movie. No, nah, I mean, just a plot synopsis. There's more to it. We know he's going to be on Earth. We know Loki that... trying to find Odin. Yes. We don't know how he's going to be imprisoned. We don't know what's going on, how he loses the hammer. And we know he's going to throw down with the Hulk. In gladiatorial armor, Planet Hulk style. With or without Mjolnir? Sounds like without. That sounds really the, tough. The one poster we've seen just showed him with a sword. Oh, well. Does that mean he... Well, he can't really kill the Hulk. No. I mean, look at all... I mean, back in the day, all these weapons that were designed were essentially like non-bloody weapons, if you use them, but... Like a hammer or a shield. Like, nothing like pointy or like penetrating like a gun or a sword or anything like that no but definitely the hammer could cause some blood well yeah but you know you could be like aha have at thee and like whack someone with it like this mystical hammer and nobody not... talks like that anymore that's a shame have at thee like somebody get cut off on my way to work tomorrow I'd be like have at thee and drive by them and flip them off How, uh, do you get cut off it's tough driving through manchester sometimes at seven fifteen a.m yeah but that'll do it for the news this week we're oh. now a well, lean in news week, I might say. Actually, it was pretty... Compared to the last two weeks, now that we're out of the holidays, there was something. Yeah. That's... Compared to the last two weeks, where I'm like... Just making it up. World kept spinning. For now. <laughs> Never know. There could be a meteorite. There could be. But now, it's time for us to cover what everyone on the internet has felt the need to cover. What do you mean, everyone on the internet? I feel like this is like an internet rite of passage. Like, everyone has to throw their two cents in. Oh, um, are we talking about um, whatever happened to ICQ? No. How many people still use AIM Instant Messenger? No one. They shut that down. Oh, see? No, well, that see, doesn't no, exist I anymore. Didn't, I didn't know that. I haven't been... How many people still have a MySpace? Somebody uh, tonight at my basketball game they do. made a MySpace reference. MySpace still exists, by the well, way. Well, I thought it was just for bands. No one has, like, a private... I don't think... I'm sure there are plenty of people that have bands. My MySpace profile still exists. I just don't remember my username and password to get in to, like, disable it. Am I in your top eight? No, I don't think you were in my top you eight. You son of a bitch. Uh, I was never in your top eight. I couldn't tell you. Well. I uh, couldn't. Of course I couldn't tell you. It was forever ago. All right, we're moving on. It is time. I'm the best there is at what I do. But what I do best... Isn't very nice. It's time for an editor's note podcast review. Okay, let's. You sound so depressed about um, it. Like, okay. Well, I don't even know. When was the last time you watched this? Okay, yeah, let's just say it. it's in the title, but we'll say it anyway. We're talking about the Star Wars prequels. Mm. Seeing that we just saw Rogue One, a good prequel, we're just going to keep going with prequels. Keep on talking about the best Star Wars has to offer. So your question, I assume, was going to be, when was the last time I watched the prequels? Yeah. The most recent one I watched was um, Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. I had actually, not too long ago, watched... Um, it's okay, there's no shame here. Mo I watched most of most of Phantom Menace, and I kind of slogged through bits and pieces of Attack of the Clones. Before we get into it, I want to bring us back in time. Go back to, oh, let's say 97. Hmm. Did you see the re-releases in theaters? No, I did not see really? the re-releases in theaters. And if memory serves, they came out like two months apart. Like, it was really oh, fast. Bang, 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 yeah. Like, there was no messing around. They weren't like, wait a while. It was like, here's one, two months later, here's one, two months later, here's one. All I know is, like, the re-releases just added more than needed to be there in some places. I've, it's the only time I've seen those movies in theaters. I mean, I'm I sure I got to was, see Star Wars on the big screen. I'm sure it was exciting to see it on the big screen. Oh, hell yeah. But I think sometimes there's a little too much, like... You know, adding like Banthas on Tatooine that didn't leave footprints in the sand. I know it's getting kind of picky, but still. I think I mean, my biggest, um, I mean, there's, the thing I like the least is I don't like the Jabba re reveal. It was cool to see like new footage of Harrison Ford, but there's such a buildup of like who oh, Jabba yeah, is. Oh yeah, when, when Jabba's at the like, hangar, hangar 94. Even if, even if he looked better, 
Like there was a build up over two movies originally of like what who who is this Jabba that he's running from? Who's Jabba the Hutt? Yeah. Like, and then there's this big reveal in Jedi. So just seeing him like hanging out in the first one, you're like, oh, there he is. But they it's a slug. filmed the scene. Yeah. Or tried to film it. So I'm curious to know. I think it was just like a regular humanoid type person. No, it was, it was a real fat guy just yeah. wearing a bunch of fur. Yeah. And that's Harrison Ford walks around behind him, and they had to say that like he stepped on Jabba's tail in mm-hmm. the special edition to make it work, which. I don't think he would do with big fat slug Jabba. No. Anyway, we're not talking about that. But okay, let's go back. Do you Especially remember after he fried pork burrito? What was the buildup for you going into it? For Phantom Menace? Yeah, I really should have asked you, should have prepped you with some of these ahead of time. No, I like these questions on the fly. Uh, I think for me, it was an opportunity to see a Star Wars movie in well, the theater. Do you theater. remember, like. But I was excited because we're going to get. Jedi, we're gonna get more lightsaber. I've always been a big lightsaber fan. I love this the sword fight. We're gonna like get to see the Jedi use their lightsabers at their prime. We're gonna get to see young Obi Wan. I've always loved the character of Obi Wan. Uh, I remember the first time that I watched Star Wars and Obi Wan died. I was like really upset. Like, what? You can't kill Obi Wan. So for me, it was I was excited, and I had always heard like from my friends who were way, way, way into it. That had read the books and they understood like the backstory, like oh you know like talking about Anakin Skywalker and fighting on the edge of a volcano, like all that stuff I'd always heard my friends talk about. I was excited to actually kind of see. I remember, and I'll stand by. It's still great. And now through the internet, I know I didn't see the first one, but I saw the second trailer released, mm-hmm. and this is back in the days of dial-up. It took eight hours. Oh, yeah. To download that two and a half minute and, trailer. And it was quick time. Yeah, it was. So, so it's like that two by like four oh, box on quick time. Box. Now, on dial. And I remember mine was, um, it was, I think you look up, it's the second trailer. It's like the tanks that are just coming over the ridge. We oh, yeah. Hitting it like every couple, like go back like every 20 minutes to get like an extra couple of seconds. Like, But you go back and watch it from just... all the way from the beginning and go back yeah, and did it, yeah, like yeah. See, watch the trailer. Literally, the, I remember. The original this... trailer breakdown by <laughs> Zach Bowen. Oh, yeah. This was literally eight hours that we had to tie up the phone line for me to watch that trailer. Yes. And there was so much hype going into it. And I was even, um, this is kind of right at the end of the time of my life like i was just old enough to kind of stop buying toys mm-hmm. actually I think this is what ended it for me before i went into the movie i was 11 when you came out <laughs> you were 23 <laughs> i i bought two toys before this movie in action figure form their design was different and i kind of liked it this is embarrassing i oh, bought no, no, please please a battle droid in jar jar binks See, the second one is embarrassing. <laughs> First one, Battle Droid, cool. Action figure-wise, they look different. Well, yes. One is kind of badass. One is really goofy. <laughs> but then I go, I see the movie, and I was just excited to see Star Wars. And the way film works, and this isn't me just, like, spouting crap. This is more just film in general. The first ten minutes, like, the film has to hook you within the first ten minutes for you to be invested. And then there's the last 10 minutes, and that's what you go out feeling. And those last 10 minutes, which in later years I've picked apart more, but at the time, the first time you see it, you haven't seen anything like that in Star Wars, blew you away. Oh. So you're left feeling okay at the end of it. You get to see actual Jedi. You get to see, like, this is what they were about. Because you've always heard these stories about the Jedi were the peacekeepers of the galaxy, and they had all these... You get to see that mentor mentee relationship between the two of them i think the first time i realized that i wasn't super on board for it is my dad had a friend and this guy loves star wars and he goes oh yeah this is his favorite movie he's seen it 10 times and me who's watched every movie i own about 50 times i just went why and that was kind of the first moment like oh this isn't very good is it but you know you knew there's gonna be more yes and I just wanted to give general impressions, and then we can kind of <clears throat> get into these. You know, let's hey, let's start with first impressions and stuff. Then Attack of the Clones happens. That was the trailer for Attack of the Clones. Again, the, that was still kind of the dial-up was a little faster, but you still kind of. I was excited by the trailer for Attack of the Clones. I thought there was some real potential to it. This is where you lost me fully. Me? No, just oh. in general, me on the prequel trilogy. I've talked about it before. Mm. And mine was the opposite marketing. Mine was, and I know I said it on the show before, the DVD marketing. Who da man? Yoda man. 
Yeah. Who the oh. man? No, 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 Yo, no, 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 no. Stop it. Five times Stop it. per commercial. Like, Stop it. I hate this movie. I hate it so much. I had forgotten about that, and now you brought it back up. You've ruined my day. Uh, but that... I'll go more into detail with that movie, but that was the one where I fell off. And Well, because we get a ton of whiny Anakin in that. I wasn't fully on the hate train with Phantom Menace at the time, because that wasn't... Nothing was set in stone yet. It was like... Well, things could be different. You, they could just be yeah. laying the groundwork. But once we're like, okay. What do you think of the pod <laughs> race? Um, Not what do you, what did you? Two separate questions. I don't know. I don't. It didn't leave a big impact on me at the time. Now I think that movie drags in the middle hard. Like all that stuff's a huge waste. Yes. But I mean, I just remember thinking it was nonsense. Like. The timing of it. Like, that his that he was so fast that he could catch up after being, like, an entire lap behind mm. and then win. And, like, everyone else is terrible at this. Mm. I get that. I think it was really... And then it breaks, the... like, multiple times. And I remember, and I understand what it is now, but the CG is so bad during that. Like, when a part falls off and all the smoke starts, like, shooting out of it. The CG is so bad, I didn't know what was happening. And it wasn't until, like, maybe the, my second or third time watching, I'm like, oh, that's supposed to be smoke. Mm. I didn't know that was black smoke. But it doesn't again, look good. Remember, this was the early, this was what, early mid-90s, mid-90s. Think about how far it's coming. But also remember, I also kind of, like, quantify it with Toy Story was coming out around that time. And that was phenomenal computer Oh, that was 95. CG. Yeah. So I, that was before, because and there's something ninety seven, ninety eight. Actually, I remember a lot of that Tatooine stuff bothering me because there was like that one little girl, like the kid actors were terrible. One of the little girls, I'm like, why does she have braces? It's a weird thing for this world. Yeah, well, you think they would have fixed some of that? Did you think that they was like young Greedo, wasn't it? It was supposed to be the yeah. kind of scene. Ah, uh-huh. but then there's poor the, Greedo. The worst ADR in Star Wars is in that scene. Like, they lift up Anakin on his shoulders, and he just goes like, I did it! Yeah! But his mouth isn't moving. Like, By the way, ADR, automatic dialogue replacement, or looping. But yeah, I was... Even at 11, I was like, mouth didn't move. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. No, no, it's not. Then, no, we didn't see Revenge of the Sith together. You... Did you see that with me when I first saw it? I don't remember who did, but I know you went, like... I went to the midnight screening of it. Yeah, you went, like... A couple of days or a week before me, I don't remember. I went to the midnight opening, and then I went like another three or four days later to watch it again. That might have been with me. I don't remember. I think it was the second I was with you. Yeah, it was a while ago, but I, I do remember that you saw it a few days before me. Yep. And I remember we um, the PlayStation Two game of Revenge of the Sith came out, oh. and if you played that game, which came out like a week before, you got to play through. They had a lot of scenes that were cut right out of the movie that you got to watch on PlayStation. Yes. Oh, the other thing that was that freaked me out, I'll never forget this. About that time, I had bought the box set, the uh, 4, 5, and 6 box set, uh-huh. and they had redone some stuff. So I don't know, I hadn't watched, I was watching um, Return of the Jedi, and I hadn't seen it for a while since I had bought the box set of 4, 5, and 6. So at the end, when all the Force Ghosts show up and friggin' Hayden Christensen's in there, I'm like, what the hell's going on? It really, like, literally <laughs> freaked me out. You know what's funny about that shot? So the body is still the same body. Yes. Like, they didn't shoot Hayden Christensen in those robes. No. Like, that's still the same. What's his name? She- Sebastian, uh, Sebastian Shaw. Sebastian Shaw. Yeah, it's still his body. And it's not even that they shot new footage of Anakin. They just cropped his head from a scene out of Revenge of the Sith and plopped it on top. Yeah. It's weird. But it's a weird it, composite. I mean, it, Kind of works, but I like the thought of it being the older Force Ghost of Anakin. You know, being the Sebastian Shaw. It's just, it's just jarring. I, you know what? Speaking of um, some of the redo, or the re, um, the the edits and the the, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is in this moment. Um, the special edition. Yes, I did like that they replaced um, the Emperor with um, Ian McDermott. The Emperor with the Emperor, yeah, when they upgraded the hologram. Yes, but they also extended the scene out because there's additional dialogue in the special edition that wasn't there in the uh, original version when it was the Emperor that kind of looked like he had fish eyes. I'm, I wrote down, I didn't get real specific here, I wrote down a few notes that I need to go through about these movies. And I go back, 
Okay. Well, Revenge I don't... Of... We didn't talk about Revenge of the Sith. Your oh, thoughts? I didn't hate it. I still don't hate it. It's the best of I, the three. I have the more... I just... Going into Rogue One, I rewatched them. I have more problems with it as time goes on. Mm. My two biggies at this point... Like, I have a lot of biggies. But my two most recent ones that have come up in my head, so you haven't had... <laughs> the listener hasn't sat in my head for the last, what, 12 years of me thinking about these things. Probably best for the listener's health. Yeah. It really only hit me the last time. What the hell is up with Padme? Her character completely changes. She went from being a leader to being like this badass climbing a post, shooting a cat in the face, into being like unquestioning, like weird submissive love for Anakin. Oh, yeah. Like there's a difference between having unconditional love and having unquestioning love. I would, and it got yeah. weird. Like her character was especially completely different. She's just like, I love you and I listen to everything. And especially. Especially, what the hell happened to her? That's a great point because she talks about, especially when the um, um, the Chancellor at the time then says it's going to be a galactic empire. She obviously has disdain for Palpatine, yet Anakin will do anything and only talks positive about him. And by the way, she just goes along with everything in I, this weird way that seems so against the character that was in the other two movies. I find it very um, suspicious and odd. That nobody figured out that her and Anakin were getting it on. Yeah, how do they not know? They're like, yeah, like C-3PO <laughs> would friggin' blab at some point. Like, we just live together. Yeah. Why, you know, where's Anakin staying tonight? You know, Obi-Wan goes over to his place, you know, with some spice. Maybe, hey, Annie, let's get high tonight. Not home. Where is he? The other thing I've decided recently that really bugs me, and I know that it's what they had to do to, like, set up the movie, but it was a little too contrived. So... The whole high ground thing is dumb. I get it's an old military term. doesn't really apply here. Jump yeah. slightly to the right or left. Whatever. Stupid. High ground thing is stupid. Or force choke him. But what bugs me is that Obi-Wan's like, you are my brother. And Anakin is burning to death. And he just walks away. So one, he thought he was dead. Yes. Or two, he's like, I don't want to deal with this. Or even all of the above. If he's like not sure if he's dead or he's dying, put him out of his misery. That's a very he good He just point. left his best friend. Which also, we see like two scenes of them being cordial to each other, so best friend is a loose term here. But he just leaves him to burn. Like, cut his head off, man. Like, he is burning to death. Yeah. He, he is in an agony unknown to most. And as a... Like, this is a mercy killing at this point. And, but he just... Oh, yeah. Just walks away. But then, but, you know, unknowingly, again, you know, this is an argument people make, is that the pain that Anakin's in allows him to fuel and feed off the dark side, which allows him to maintain himself being alive long enough. No, I'm blaming Obi-Wan here. Oh, this is Obi-Wan's like, fault. Don't get uh, me wrong. I love Obi-Wan. Don't just walk away. They the, I think if I remember correctly, like, I'm just they, had to shoot, they had to shoot the pickup of him picking the lightsaber up because they forgot to shoot that, I think. Yeah, that's supposedly what I heard too. But yeah, just, what are you doing? Like, he, you left him on fire. Yeah. Make sure he's dead. You already cut off three of his four limbs. Yeah, at this point, like, what are you doing? That seems weird to me, right? Like, that he's just like, we had this epic battle, eh, I'm just gonna walk away. Which, by the way, I think that was a, that's a badass fight from start to finish. Um, more the start, less the finish. Yeah, the end is kinda, eh. Well, more when they're on, like, hover platforms. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. We went from, like, cool, practical, to silly. Well, I mean, remember, 90% of that movie is CG. <sighs> All right. I go back and forth on this. I can't tell you which is my least favorite. I think it switches every time I watch these movies. So we're pretty much, we can agree that episode three is the best of the three. Yeah. It's, I mean, at least it's fun to a point. It's fun to a point and it kind of ties things up and it gets, we get the payoff, the two movie payoff of how does Anakin become Darth Vader? We didn't need three movies about that. What we should have had is two movies about that and a third movie of Darth Vader just kicking ass. Oh, like the last minute and a half of yeah. Rogue One? That's what these movies should have been. Should have I been found like that clip on YouTube two. the other day. Oh, did you? So badass still. He's holding the guy up and as he walks by, slices through him and then... It's, oh. Now, I want to preface this statement. Okay. I don't think George Lucas is racist. Fair enough. That being said... What the hell is up with all the weird racial stereotypes? I I don't know. Like, Asians get it right up front with those weird guys with their trade federation. Oh, the, um, the Viceroys? Yeah, there's some uh, weird stuff with 
like dumb stereotypical like slave black characters with Jar Jar. What is going on here? This mm. wasn't these weren't in the other movies. We've just started making like weird, broad, offensive racial stereotypes. I and think it's uncomfortable to watch. I think part of it is he's trying to create a broader world because he had yeah, more there's some broad ability, strokes there. More ability to create larger worlds than because before, you know, oh, we're going to Hoth? Well, we're going to make a snow planet, so we have to go where there's snow. Oh, we're going to be on Tatooine? Let's go to Tunisia where there's sand. Oh, a forest planet? We're just going to go right over here to the Redwood Forest. They were very limited in the world they could create because the technology wasn't there to yeah. create these practical worlds. And now with that, and he says it uh, in some of the special features and documentaries about it, you know, especially in episode three, they wanted this. They wanted to flex their muscle. Like we can make all these. We can make a lava planet. We can make that weird. Yeah, but you can do that without having avatar planet. Weird racial stereotypes that it kind of goes away in the second movie. But yeah. Phantom Menace is it's all over the place. By the way, do you ever worry, like wonder if the planet where they kill that one Jedi Master, the female Jedi Master, does it remind you of the Avatar planet at all? I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. Something I like, John Williams. Oh God. His music and <laughs> you didn't like that? No, I do. The Duel of the Fates. Yeah, but they and then if you've ever watched like the behind the scenes or like the making of episode one, they talk about the music and John was like, "This refrain here, this Duel of Fates, like this could come back throughout the you know the franchise, and it has, and I I love it. I love the my favorite piece of Star Wars music though from the whole thing is." The force theme is that, you know, Luke Skywalker theme, the slow French horn, like when he's looking at the double sunset, the first time they do that. The same one that we get when he's standing on top of the mountain at the end of um, episode seven. The action. It sucks. Oh, come on. There's some good action in there. <clears throat> um, I hate fighting all the CG robots. I don't understand why they just randomly can run really fast for that one scene. Like, they just dart off screen at the very beginning when they're being shot at. Like, boy, good thing you didn't use that power later on when you're in some kind of weird force field room that's never explained in any way, shape, or form that just opens sporadically. If only yeah. you could dash really fast, like faster than... Have you ever seen there's a YouTube clip of somebody editing Obi-Wan running really fast and he goes through there and runs and falls down through the hole? No, I haven't seen that. It's funny. And this is more of a thing that you've seen, like, later on with people cutting gifts, but just, like, how a lot of the blows they're going for are just cinematic blows. They're not kill blows. Yeah. Like, they're over their heads and everything. The uh, the last fight in Revenge of the Sith I'm kind of on board for, like, at least the first half of it. It's very visceral. It's probably my favorite shot of those movies is Obi-Wan and Anakin. They're kind of in silhouette going through a hallway. You see a lightsaber kind of like spin up and then like sparks are flying. Oh, when they're coming down that narrow hallway. Yeah, it's, it's, like the... it's a quick shot, but it's really, really good. It always mm. kind of like captures my imagination, stands out when I watch it. There's also some bad continuity in that. There's a, there's a part I of that fight. It. There's a part of that fight where Anakin is choking Obi-Wan and Obi-Wan is holding Anakin's lightsaber. Because mm-hmm. at some point in the fight, it got cut. He... Obi-Wan has both lightsabers, so he gets a hold of them. He gets a hold of Anakin's at one point. <laughs> Good thing, bad thing. I don't know if I can do that the whole time. God, the sentence boring. Question, by the way. Speaking of lightsaber duels, would you consider Obi-Wan to be one of the greatest lightsaber duelists? No, and I think that's why I like him. But he... I like that Obi-Wan isn't like, the like no one ever looks at him as like, he's the best of the best. Like, no, he's just a guy who kind of like, just works hard, does the best he can, and he's not going to like, well, rock anyone's world, but he's just... He did defeat two Sith Lords. I'm just saying. Like, well, one and a half. I mean, he he cuts Darth Maul in half. He technically beats Darth Vader. No one ever goes like, oh, Obi-Wan, like the greatest trader. Like, no, he's just a guy who keeps his head down. He works hard. He's, I like he's that about the... him. I like that the, he's not like some big prophesized figure. No, he's just yeah. a guy that works. And I enjoy that about him. No, he's, but he's... I mean, he's one of the best Jedi. He's one of the... You know, speaking of the best Jedi, let's talk about the worst Jedi. Oh no, don't do the CGI Yoda. No, well, oh. I mean, he sucks. And Lucas, I, he said he wanted that to look like Mario when he's fighting um, Christopher Lee. Oh, he's bouncing all over. Yeah, he yeah. said he wanted everything bad ever is Qui Gon's fault. He found this boy, and if he just listened to the damn council when they said don't train him, then he was a dick about it. Yes, but do you think that even if without that, you know, Palpatine finds him anyway and trains him to be Sith Lord? No, I don't think so. I think it's all Qui-Gon's fault. 
Well, he found the convergence in the force. And nothing happens by accident. The force draws you to... Does it? Well, because this is actually one I don't care about. For, for me, it kind of works. But I know a lot of people it doesn't. Midi-chlorians. What about them? I don't care. You have to explain how the force works somehow. People got real up in arms about that. Like, it's a religion, and now it's like this weird like science thing. And like, Can't they be both? But it kind of makes sense to me. It's like if like all of the Skywalkers have that, isn't that something that needs to be passed down genetically? I would think so. Because if it's a religion, why can't everybody do it? I don't know. It's just... Like, everybody can go to church. So you, you know, I was expecting you to have stronger feelings on midi-chlorians. Me? Yeah. No, I like it. I don't like it. I just don't care. I think it's a good explanation as to what the Force is. I know people are like, fuck, midi chlorians. I'm like, I don't really care. Whatever, it doesn't really change anyone for me. It sounds a lot like mit- mitochondria, which makes you think of things in cells. Uh, I will give George Lucas credit. He wanted to make the movies he wanted to make. And he made them. And he made them to a T, and they suck. <laughs> I wish he I... made... That being Look, said... I don't want to say he made George Lucas movies, because George Lucas has made movies that don't suck. Well, he kind or of... been involved in movies that don't suck, like the Indiana Jones movies. I will... Like, people who were like, you see that stuff, like, George Ru- Lucas raped my child. I'm like, shut up. No, he did, and it's a movie. No, but I will... And I will... I mean, Christ, art's... Art is massively important, but he didn't ruin anyone's life. Shut no, up. I will say this, and I don't. Th- I think he's a talented writer. He's a talented visionary as far as creating a story. He's a really good storyteller. He's just not a very good director. And this is my well, this is my argument. All right, with oh, the I exception, of, I'm sure you do. With the exception, of episode four, and even with episode four, I mean, there's things about it that are kind of. It was the effects that were the revolutionary part. He had this great vision, and he employed the right people to make his vision come to life. You know, the art of Ralph McQuarrie that was involved in all of that. Um, The founding of ILM and how ILM worked in the revolution of developing the motion control camera. He's a concept man. Okay. But he's a good he's a good businessman too. But from oh, he's very smart businessman. He's a good concept man. He's a good businessman. But thematically not thematically but cinematically comparing revenge of the, uh, comparing empire strikes back to new hope empire strikes back is a far superior film it's well, more it's better constructed better shot i mean and even he he even talks about some of that there's the scene on bespin in cloud city where luke is fighting darth vader and he talks about it in the director's commentary he's like I love the lens selection by Kershaw. He you know, uses a, a certain kind of lens, stacks everything up, makes Vader look huge. And it's like, those are the things that he, you know, isn't as good at as someone like an Irvin Kershner. Well, what George Lucas is not, he is not an actor's director. He has two commands, faster and more intense. Well, here's, I'll probably go to another one, but here's the only example I really need. He made Samuel L. Jackson boring. Mm. The most charismatic actor, just Samuel L. Jackson turns everything up to 11. And in yeah. this movie, he is painful to watch. Everything he delivers is dead. He did get a purple lightsaber, though. Yes, because he was it's like, give me a purple one. George is like, well, really, they're supposed to reflect the honor of the lightsaber. He's like, no, I want a purple one. Oh, okay. okay. But everything you do, you have to deliver dead eyed. Fair. I sense a plot to destroy the... You'd have a little more urgency. No, he... Samuel L. Jackson is boring. Name another movie. I don't care if it's a bad movie or a good movie. Name me another movie where Samuel L. Jackson is boring. Can't think of one. Even when he had a short cameo in Coming to America, he was friggin' awesome. He's... He always has charisma. He always has energy. But in this, he is dead. Hmm. It's awful. People always give, I feel bad for poor Hayden Christensen, because he was given, how can you deliver the lines he was given? Oh, yeah. Who could give a good delivery on any of that crap? Well, I mean, again, like they said, um, Carrie Fisher is famous for saying, Hans, no, it was Harrison Ford. It was Harrison Ford, you can write it, but you can't act it. <laughs> he was a little more colorful with his language. Yeah. But yeah, no, he was given awful dialogue. I don't think it's his fault. I feel bad for the guy. Ooh, George Lucas? 
Or no, um, well, or that's not true. I do Hayden. feel bad for George Lucas at a point. Like, I've seen um, there's this video you can find out there where he's just like, "Why would I make more of these if people just tell you everything you do is wrong?" It's a good point. But people are like, is there going to be more Star Wars? Like, no, they're not doing anymore. Especially why would then, I? Why would I want to do Kennedy it? Kennedy takes his story treatments for seven, eight, nine and burns them. Well, he was <laughs> in a dumpster. That's pretty. But cool. he's like. Why would I want to do more of these if all people do is tell me that I'm wrong? Can you blame him? Um, and I'll give him a lot of credit. Part of the reason, I think actually not part of, basically the reason that he ended up selling Lucasfilm to Disney was to keep everyone employed who worked for him. He saved a ton of jobs that way. He saved a ton of jobs and he made a ton of bank on it. And he also puts, and he doesn't, he's not real upfront about it, but he gives a lot of money to charities and a lot of money back into the arts and a lot of the money into art schools to help bring up up and coming filmmakers, especially in kind of urban populations. The guy does a ton. These movies are still crap, but he does a ton. He's a good guy. I like George Lucas a lot, but I think some of the better stuff is stuff that he is a producer on. He's a concept guy. And he, um, he has this line, he's like, films are never... Uh, finished. They're just abandoned. Yeah, that's not true. I think that you know. Also, you know, he just he never was beholden to the Hollywood system, and it also cost us an opportunity for Steven Spielberg to direct the Star Wars movie. I would have loved to see Steven Spielberg direct because he was supposed to. Yeah, he was. Supposed he was to the do first Jedi. choice to do Jedi, but Spielberg. I mean, um, Lucas got into a big fight with the Directors Guild. Over so dumb about putting he putting, um, not he, having any opening credits. opening credits. He wanted people Richard just to be like in the movie, in the experience, and they're like, and now it happens all the time. Yeah. Well, I I really just want people to feel the experience of Star Wars, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave your guild. Oh yeah, and then, George then Lucas to, my role is Kermit the Frog. Oh yeah, but then he had to pay a ton of money to and fines for that from the Directors Guild. Yeah, okay, I'm George guild. Lucas. Yeah. Well, now it doesn't matter. But that meant that he couldn't, you know... Yeah, uh, Spielberg couldn't work with him. Like, no one in the guild could. Yeah. But, I don't know. I don't... These aren't good movies. I can't... I don't get angry about them. I, I probably get angry. Like, I don't get angry. If When I'm watching them, I'm like, what is this? It's... But I don't waste time getting mad at these movies. The other movies are still out there. And there's still good movies out there. It's... And there are parts of them that are good and entertaining, but they're not... Okay, why don't we try that? Give me something... What's something positive from episode one that we haven't mentioned? I don't have an answer here. I'm going to think. I think that, the again, the first part of the lightsaber battle that we get to actually see... Oh, I kind of hate that. You don't like the... You don't like No, I I hated the reveal. Because first, let's say um, you're watching... You're a young boy. Hmm, yes. Your young little Jared. Let's also say that like you're growing up right now. Like you oh, watch okay. episode one. It's your first movie. Ooh. They just pull out the lightsabers like it's nothing. And then this is also the case for episode four, though. Like the first fight sucks. Well, it's an old man versus a machine. Well, no, even the episode one does too, which is also this weird scene where it's clearly been cut. Like Qui Gon and Anakin are just booking it yeah. for no reason because there's a cut scene. And then there's just a really boring fight with Qui Gon and Darth Maul, and then it just kind of ends. Yeah, you see, like the, like, the introduction to lightsabers both times sucks. Well, you get the lightsabers on the the ship when they're trying to talk to the viceroys. Yeah, no, they just pull them out, and then they, there's just nothing to it. They just stand there, and then they put them away. Yeah, and they're like, we're just gonna hold our breath for a while, which is kind of you get to see some force abilities. We still haven't touched on the big one, the biggie, Jar Jar. I called him a terrible the, stereotype. Have you seen the fan theory that Jar Jar is That's actually... dumb. It's okay. a stupid idea. Thank you. But what I do like about Jar Jar is that... And this is talking about George Lucas here. George Lucas, who is so insistent on... Everyone says, we hate the special editions. And he just kept pushing through. He's like, no. Yeah. These are the definitive cuts. I'm not backing down. People were like, I hate Jar Jar. And he backed down immediately. Movie 2, his... I mean, role is like well, diminished. I mean, his role is also giving power to the emperor. So you know, Jar Jar ruined the galaxy. Yeah. So Jar Jar and uh, Qui Gon boo on him, um, and he's non-existent in the third film except for the funeral scene. Ha- doesn't have a single line. He does get a line in Jedi now. I'm not kidding. What? The end scene um, after the Death Star is blown up. Oh yeah, yeah, they yeah. They started cutting to... Yeah, we suffer. 
That's exactly the line. Yeah, he has a line in Jedi now. Jar Jar's in Jedi. Ugh. But you know what Jar Jar did do in the character of Jar Jar? Not from a standpoint of, like, the character Jar Jar, but the actual, like, representation of Jar Jar is it paved the way for motion capture. <sighs> it really made huge advances in motion capture. Oh, you know what? We didn't talk about my least favorite thing in these movies. C-3PO. Oh. Bad before, insufferable here. Well. He wasn't bad like... when we first showed up, but he was just like a little puppet. Mm-hmm. But in episode two, when he's just punning all over the place, he's like, oh, I'm just beside myself. I seem like, to have lost my head. Oh, what a drag. I hate you so much. Well, the original Star Wars movies were are told through the eyes of the droids. Like, the droids are like... Yeah, the point of view character. Which was like, it was from a Kurosawa film, um, uh, which was, what was it? Um, it was one of the Kurosawa films where there's two guys, and they're kind of like, everything's happening around them, and you're kind of following them. I just, I hate him so much in those movies. And like, 3PO is always saving the day. And... I didn't know, we, like, I didn't mind him in the other yeah. movies, but when it came to the prequels, this character is the worst. And then they just throw away that, like, cop out line at the end, they're like, Erase his memories. I'm like, uh-huh, okay, that's how we're doing this. Yeah, but they, okay, so wipe the protocol droid's mind. So then how is he going to still be fluent in over 10,000 or 10 million forms of communication if they wipe his memory? And then they don't do anything to R2-D2. Well, he can't talk. He's just like, mom, 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 People understand it. Do they? That's never really clear, actually. <laughs> well, you make, you like, put stuff on a text display for um, Luke. Luke. Why can't he be like, oh, oh, by the way, Darth Vader's your dad. We hung out a bunch. Yeah. He's kind of a prick. Uh, I was he, his, he doesn't like sand, actually. I was his favorite droid. Uh, and then they kind of killed Boba Fett. He's just not interesting. The whole Django Fett oh, thing. Oh, yeah. He never really... I was going to say, they didn't... I mean, Boba Fett allegedly died in Return of the Jedi. I don't know. These, There's no real flushing out of a Boba Fett character. These movies, they just... They've been beat to death. And I don't... The funny thing is... And I'm sure I'm not the first person to point this out. But if these weren't Star Wars movies, we would never talk about them. Mm. They would have come and gone, and we would never have mentioned them again. No. Like, there's so many movies in the 90s. So many movies, like, I was going to say mid to late 90s, but really throughout the 90s. The 90s is a dumpster fire. Not for everything, but, like, especially for, like, action and sci-fi. Nope. You know who I thought was really good through all three of them, despite, you know, the situation? I thought Ewan McGregor did a yeah, good I thought, job. Yeah, I thought we gave him enough credit, but yeah. He did the best he could with the material. I'd like to see him come back and do more. No, he's consistent. I mean, he's good in everything. I can't, oh, yeah. I can't really... Ah, uh, that's not true. I, I thought for a second. Like, I can't tell you a bad Ewan McGregor performance. Then I thought of one, but I'll move on. Okay. What one was that? Jack the Giant Slayer. Oh, yeah. It's a real crap movie. Don't watch it. I'm actually kind of interested to see how he does with Beauty and the Beast. I don't care. Well, I don't, I, I don't watch the new trailer yet. It's actually not bad. Um, I like watching movie trailers. But man, these movies can't be erased. No. They exist. You know what got erased? Jake Lloyd's career after that. What else was he in? Uh, right now, I think he's in a psych ward. Uh, he was in um, Jingle All the Way before that. Put that cookie down! It's Turbo Man! I'm sick of this Turbo Man! Yeah, with, with Phil Hartman. Yes, who, you know. And Sinbad. Sinbad was in that. Yes, he was. Uh, yeah, it was. I'm out of people who were in that movie. No. Yeah, these movies have been beat to death. The reality is, they're not the worst thing in the world. They're just kind of boring. I think it's. They're bad, but they're not like. I think the problem. Offensively bad the in the world. The problem with them and... is, is we know where it's going. And we know there's never any real peril for Anakin Skywalker, there's no real peril for Yoda, there's no real peril for Obi-Wan, because they all are going to come out on the other side. We never needed it's these just movies. Like a, what? We never needed them. I never... There's no information that those movies give us that I felt like, well, that was missing. Yeah. And the thing is, is they just don't, like... The thing about the original trilogy that worked is it was a great three-act thing. I don't know that George Lucas always says, it's all one movie, it's meant to be watched all together. Through one, but when you really look at the original trilogy, it's a perfect three-act show. The first act is your world setter. 
and you meet your characters. They get their quest. The second act, every all the you know everything goes to hell, and the heroes have to find their way back. And the heroes' circle is completed in the third act. So we get all of that in the original trilogy. We don't really get that in the. The other thing that people forget, I'm cutting you off. I didn't mean to. That's fine. I was just thinking. Right now, it's kind of hard to imagine, but Star Wars went away for a bit. Like, mm. like late '80s, like early '90s, there wasn't really Star Wars. There wasn't any new material. It didn't really matter. The special editions brought interest back, and then doing the prequels kind of like relit that fire. Whether you want to admit it or not, Star Wars was kind of dead. And if it wasn't for getting the prequel trilogy, we wouldn't be getting more Star Wars now. And but I think which this, I, that's a tough thing for me to complain about. Like, no, boo, Star Wars. But the Star Wars now is pretty. Darn good. Yeah, so I mean, we had, you know, we had to go through that. We learned what didn't work, and it brought Star Wars back into the public eye, whether you want to admit that or not. And I say you do. Admit it. All right, so let's use our patented review system. Um, God. Uh, red box at sand theaters or don't bother? <laughs> um, accept its existence. That's all I have to say. Accept that it's there. They're not bad rainy day movies, but you could also probably just YouTube the best clips of it and get past some of the really whiny, angsty, Anakin in love that you get when he's on Naboo, and uh, so on and so forth. I don't buy their chemistry one bit. Oh no, it's forced. It's also very, like, like she's, what, like, 14 or 16 when she meets Anakin, who's, like, 8? You know what I still can't do? This is a legit thing. What? I can't tell, because uh, it's under so much makeup, I can't tell when it's Natalie Portman or Keira Knightley under all of, like, the cake makeup. Which is pretty kind of cool. It, like, I still can't serves, tell. It serves the purpose. I don't, like... I don't know if other people can. I can't. Hey, if you can, tweet, text, don't rate, te- review, subscribe. Don't text me. But do the other things. Uh, <laughs> tweet, text. Don't. Don't text. No. Because I don't want texts. I don't want texts in my normal life. No, you don't. You're not that kind of guy. God, I'm not. But yeah, that's, I don't know. Except its existence, you don't need to watch them. They're there. They did what they needed to do. They're a good Whether rainy day like movie. They're like an occasional, oh, I want to just kind of throw something on and watch it. All right, do we have any letters to the editor here in the new year? We do. All right. Lot of questions, number one. Damn few answers. Here's another one of your letters to the editors. Make it so. Thanks for sending in a couple extras. We're set for a few weeks, which I appreciate. All right. There's one that I've been meaning to do for like a month, but I keep on not doing the research on it. I even okay. wrote it. I even wrote it down on my notes, like research it this time. I did it. Oh boy. <laughs> I'll get around to it. If you so we gotta go do a different letter. Yeah, okay. um, this is a nice, easy one that I think everyone involved in podcasting has been asked. Okay. Uh, what other podcasts do you, or sorry, what podcast do you listen to? Not other ones. I don't listen to this one. Oh, I actually don't listen to a ton of them. I really enjoy, I do watch, uh, watch, because it's watch slash listen, I guess, uh, Fat Man on Batman. Mm-hmm. I like a lot of what Kevin Smith does. There's a couple of really interesting, like, historical ones, like, Serial Killer is really cool. No, that's just Serial. Oh, Serial. Serial um, Killer, no. Oh, there's, and there's a history one that I really, I've, I've heard really good things about that I want to start listening to. And I like uh, Bill Simmons' podcast from a sports standpoint. He had some, you know, especially when he was doing Grantland, had some really cool guests on, really interesting things to, like, listen to, so. Uh, with me, I had to, it was less with podcasts, more, but when we started doing this, I stopped listening to most pop culture stuff just because I know I'm going to steal jokes or just little things. I want to avoid that as much as possible. And even when I'm editing, like I'll catch a lot of them. Like that wasn't me. That I I stole it, and I, they're not intentional. So I try not to listen to a lot of pop culture things. But I have a longer list. Um, I'm just gonna go through the back end of it. It's been a little while because they do seasons. I really like Invisibilia. What's that about? It's an NPR one. It's all about like the invisible forces around us and like, like the what, force and what like yes, just, like, the force. But um, and, like kind of what shapes human behavior. I think that's an interesting aura. one. The Better Call Saul Insider Podcast. They release an episode after every episode airs. I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Serial, you already said. Listen to Smodcast usually with the Kevin, one of the Kevin Smith ones. I like If I Were You. That's a good comedy one. Weekly Planet is the only pop culture one I still listen to. It's not terribly dissimilar to this. It's news and then a theme, usually involved directly into what pop culture is happening in the world. But not as good as our show? No, I'm better. Oh. <laughs> There's an actual audience Some, there. Something to start. We have an audience. We have um, the Ed Heads. Zach didn't mean Ed Heads. You're special and we like you. 
I said, man, my writing audience is a lot bigger. I got, what, we 10 days into the new year. I already got like 66,000 people checking out my just like two things. Not a lot of people commenting on it, though. I did read your, yeah, uh, no one... I did read your uh, X Men continuity one. Oh, God. I put hours into that. That one hurt. Yeah. It hurt my brain to write the X Men movie continuity one. To make ex- and I tried to think of everything I could, and I was just making excuses. You were making excuses for X Men. Oh my god, that one hurt my brain so bad. You're fine. But I got like twenty thousand um, people reading that like day one, and it's gone up since then. Oh, look at you! You're climbing. You're becoming an internet sensation. Yeah, I'd rather not be. Well, you're becoming more of an internet celebrity than I am. <laughs> I'll change my name so no one can find me. We to like, uh, like Steve. No, <laughs> I'll just like uh, Hollywood Babylon. I like. I think that's funny. I like listening to the room where it's happening. It's a Hamilton-based podcast. Act surprised? I'm not. And one that I just started um, listening to. I had actually some of the listeners told me about it, and then I started seeing like a bunch of comic book writers tweeting about it. Jay and Miles explain the X Men. It's an overly scripted show, but they give a lot of interesting historical information. We don't have a script. No, we don't. As you could have not tell. <laughs> um, not. We tried to have a script last week, and... And for me, it's fun when I can even learn, like... I know a fair chunk about the X-Men, so even when I, like, learn something new or I hear about a series I was unaware of, I'm like, oh, no kidding. Oh, now you know. Which, granted, hasn't happened a lot, but, you know, there's still stuff to learn. Knowledge is power, man. Knowledge is power. They they have good information. It's just... And I know some podcasts do that, like, where they have, like... Like, you say this, I say this, you say this, I say this. Like, just, just talk. Yeah. It seems Have more, a conversation. Yeah, it seems more engaging that way to me. But you we're know. sitting here talking, and the Edheads are just joining us. That's, I guess, that's just a personal preference. I then. did like the one tweet from one of our Edheads. It was a picture of like you know listening to the podcast, like, and it was like a couple of kids eating cereal next to like a mural of a couple of other people. <laughs> like, I appreciate that. Here, listening in. Next week we'll be back. I think we're gonna do a terrible movie that some of you oh. may have seen. <laughs> some of you may have not seen. If it. When I was making the schedule, if it's still on YouTube. When can we watch a good movie? <laughs> Hopefully March. <laughs> That's a long time away. <laughs> but yeah, time to plug things. Massive sale at the store right now. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Massive well, sale. Which I should remember because I'm the one that did it. Well, it is your store. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Half off. Just half off. Everything except for uh, new, new releases. New releases. Look, it's been, it's cold right now. People don't want to leave the house. Got to entice them. Get them. I'm a small business. You could, it can only have so many weeks where I'm like, well, it was cold. Is that also half off like the premium vintage comic? Everything. Everything in the store. Shirts? Everything. That uh, Peter Bankman apron? Everything. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, um, and to answer the question, no, I'm not going out of business, but sometimes you just got to move money around. Oh, there you go. So that, it, way to get ahead <laughs> of it. No, I was asked that. <laughs> I'm like, no. Well, no, you have a ton of inventory to move. There's a lot of comics in that stuff. Well, that's why I gotta get people in. People yeah. gotta, you, know, you just gotta move things around sometimes. So half off though. Yeah, that's biggest sale I've done. I want to see how it works. Well, yeah. So and there's some really good vintage comics that you could get for really, you know, or good some really price. crap ones for next to nothing. Yeah, bolster up. You know, bolster stuff. There's some good. You have a lot of good uh, pop figurines in there. There's a really cool one of uh, Luke Skywalker, the Rancor, and the Dancing Girl. Yeah, so I have yeah one of those win already with the half off sale, but I got one more. So uh, yeah, half off. But yeah, find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, of course Patreon, which I'll continue to mention. And what culture? Oh yeah, and I write things, but I put I post that on the Facebook and the Twitter usually. Well, there you go. I have another article that should be going up hopefully tomorrow, maybe in two days. I wrote it, submitted it. They just gotta give the A OK. And well, wasn't that golden? They're good editors. Everything mm-hmm. they've called me out on, I'm like, makes sense. Yeah. It's worth going, like, they do a decent worth job fixing. of double checking my stuff, which is good because some, as much as I, I could say, everything I write is just like, done! But, it's, you know. At least you are able to go back and make revisions. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. They've no. got a cool thing. I really do like, I enjoy Wall Culture a lot. They've done a really good job for themselves. They've really built a, a big brand. Do you yeah. know they actually have a What Culture Wrestling Federation? Are you kidding? It's massive. Like that's like their bread and butter. Like oh, half their stuff wrestling, wrestling is bread and butter for them. Yeah, one of the I, one of them loves it. Adam, you know. I also than... like their. <laughs> yeah. I also like their countdowns. I watch a lot of their videos on YouTube. I watch more of their videos on YouTube than of ours. <laughs> I, 
But yeah, you can find my stuff there. I got a bit coming. And I'm on Twitter, at Junior Rich. We'll be back next week for, hopefully, a terrible Star Wars movie. Ugh. But which Star Wars movie? We've already done the prequels. What is left? I'm not doing the Clone Wars either. Why? I'm not, not going to watch that movie. Um, we'll be back next week. Thanks for joining us again. Um, we still got to come up with a sign you're, off. You're all good looking. That's a good one. I like that. You're all good looking. Let's leave them on a high note. See you later. Bye, everybody.